This next piece is also kinetic, but not quite with the same amount of fieriness. Um, I would like to introduce next the Fold House Collective. We have Jesse Silver and Remy Pierron, who are coming to share about the project they're bringing this year. Yes, welcome to Jesse and Remy. Thanks. Hi, everybody. We are almost there. That's very bright and very loud. OK. This is Remy, I'm Jesse. Together we are a very small part of a collection of engineers, product designers, and artists that make kinetic art. Um, fold, because most of the work we do is based on origami, and house, because of German. Um, one, one of our leads is a tall German fellow who's not here tonight, but that is we for him. We got the Frenchman We got the Frenchman instead. In 2014, we created Bloom and Lumen. Bloom and Lumen was a stand of about 10 origami flowers that opened and closed and took inspiration from nature. They were solar powered. They actually followed the wind when the wind direction changed and they all closed automatically to protect themselves when the wind got too strong, which is super adorable in a time lapse when they were all just kind of doing this. In 2016, we made Shroom and Lumen. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sherman Lumen is a collection of five origami mushrooms that kind of breathe. They move a little bit, and people interpret that to mean whatever that means. Um, some of these are now in the No Spectators exhibit at the Renwick Smithsonian. To all of you, yes. For the 2018 project we're taking on, we're taking inspiration from something very, very small to make our largest piece yet. This is the Radiolaria. It is a protozoa, which is smaller than one millimeter. And these actually, we're pretending, maybe they did. <laughs> we don't really know. But we think they occupied the lake that was Lake Lahontan, which was the lake that used to be where Black Rock City now is. Um, they're tiny little calcium protozoas that have all those little spikes and look exactly like that. And so we introduce Radiolumia, a five-story version of a <laughs> tiny little thing, because why not? Um, so covered in 42 actuating origami shells that open and close, um, you can actually go inside of it, um, covered in almost 100,000 LEDs. Uh, it'll be quite the spectacle, and Remy will tell you a little bit more. Yeah. So I don't have a job right now, so I do this. Um, <laughs> Up, right? Which way? Monkey point is super. There we go. Yeah, as if we need it. So we always start by making a scale model. Uh, it teaches us a lot about kind of how the folds interact. And uh, we also have to do it to take pictures for the honoraria submission. So it works out really well. Uh, this is about that high. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. So from the scale model, we then uh, make full scale things. Um, this is our first prototype. It allowed us to figure out what size motor we need and kind of figure out all the intricacies of the motion. Uh, so one thing we learned from it is that we needed to make our own custom extrusion. Ooh, you're way loud. Um, and that cost a lot of money for us, but it was well worth it because we get to integrate all of our LEDs and all of our motion into one piece. Uh, and since there's thousands of pieces in this thing and they all have to come together, simplifying is amazing. Uh, is it? So we also had to up our electrical and software game. Um, we're using what's called LX to integrate, yeah, uh, integrate the motion and the lights um, because our LEDs don't move, but all of our little shells do, and we don't want to blind anyone, we have to coordinate that motion with all of the lights that live in this. Uh, also, to make sure that all of our thousands of pieces come together, we had to build a full-scale CAD model, which my laptop doesn't really like. Um, but <laughs> But uh, we also had to do it because when you build things that people go inside, they kind of make sure that it's safe. Uh, and they also wanted to make sure it doesn't go tumbleweeding down the playa. So uh, doing this allowed us to do a bunch of calculations in FEA to make sure that you guys can have fun in it and that it's not going to kill anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no killing. 
So last part, it's a huge project. There's a lot of people already involved, but we'd love more help if possible. Um, the outer structure is aluminum, but the inner part that holds it all up and holds the people is steel, and we're all amateur welders. Uh, we'd love some professional help with that. Uh, if anybody out there is an actual certified welder for structural purposes, we'd love to hear from you. Um, same with water jet cutting or laser jet cutting metal. There's a few pieces that are, need to be kind of precise. Uh, we'd love to have some space to help build parts of this. We don't expect to ever build all of it before Burning Man, but just a space big enough to build a section of it would be pretty awesome. Um, also, drone pilots, uh, having a, a flight kind of through the sphere would be an amazing thing to have for us. And lastly, um, if anybody knows of a mall or a company or a civic <laughs> center or something or other that might want to have this uh, displayed afterwards, that would be fantastic. Oh, and lastly, um, guardians. If you are willing to stand by this thing for a part of an evening and make sure people don't climb it or at least treat it with some respect, that would be awesome. So foldhouse.com, see you all in the playa. <laughs>